Let's get this in my face. How are we doing this? Get it in your face. Get it in my face. What is even going on this week, my man? Uh, oh, something did happen this week. Did it? Uh, Will Smith got slapped oh. somebody, except Chris Rock. Oh my um, God. Something else happened this week, too, that I was going to talk about, but I completely forgot. Uh, it's April Fool's Day as we're recording this today. It is April Fool's Day. It's been awful. I was. This is the first time I've been on Twitter for April Fool's. And oh, let me fucking tell you. Yes, you, it's just one of those days you should not get on any no, social I, media platform ever. I'm a very gullible person. Yep. I will... Hey. Well, I mean, me too. I, like, I, I get on. I always forget what today is. I'm like, oh, sick. Or, yeah. oh, damn, that sucks. And then I realize what's going on. You read the replies and it's like, I can't believe I got on Twitter today. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, I made a post like last night. I was like, I have to get off of Twitter today because <laughs> you guys are going absolutely crazy. Like the communities that I'm in, full on into it, just posting shit. Like there's a pixel artist that changed one of their, their posts, one of their arts. They said, I'm no longer using squares anymore. Check out my new art, and it's all little hexagons. That's funny. So and they made a post about how some dude who made the pixel said, you know, well, logically one of the most efficient ways to do things for TVs and pixels was going with squares. Um, and then he, he said something about how it, it's actually not the best way to do it and why he's, like, cursed the world forever oh because goodness. of it. Um, which is apparently true. That might have been an April Fool's statement as well. Looked official news on Twitter. <laughs> I don't know. You never know. You never know. So yeah, the, the gaming sphere, they also get into it as well. Razor always posts something. I haven't seen anything yet, though. But they also D &D, post things. Did you see D&Ds? Uh-oh, what happened? <laughs> this is just dirty of them. They posted a flying a hamster and said, spell jammers confirmed. <laughs> that was just rude of them so does that deconfirm spelljammer or the theories that have been going or maybe on maybe it's just to throw us off the scent that's what i would hope because that's kind of a dick move a yeah little, some, little... some guy replied to it and, and they were like uh they were kind of doing what you were thinking they were diving deep into why they would post this and then saying so this means they're probably i mean we know it's probably confirmed because everything else we've seen yeah so i don't know Kind of fucking crazy uh, shit. Uh, but another like recent events, I, I every Tuesday on, on my stream, I play Pathfinder uh, for mm, one of my friends who, who yeah. DMs it. This is the longest experience I've had with Pathfinder 2nd Edition, specifically the Abomination Vaults, which... It's a good f second experience with the with Pathfinder, I would uh, imagine. I would say so. It's been good, which, side note, Pathfinder is apparently releasing a conversion of 5th Edition for yeah, the Abomination I'm gonna Vaults. Yeah, I should have said this ahead of time, but let me double check, see if we have a date on that yet. Yeah, I don't know if we do, but it seemed pretty cool i've had a great time with it and we've been playing it probably for a better part of five months or so and i would i would say probably 12 or 10 plus sessions somewhere mm -hmm. and it's, i've been i mean it's like three parts or something i don't know i think it's something like that we played the first book for first book for okay. context what level are you guys right now we are five or six i think we just went to six oh, well i'm five it says design the original adventure was designed for levels one through ten pathfinder characters i'm five because i died oh damn so I started I as a great knoll magus with okay. uh, like heavy weapons or whatever. And I used a reach weapon. And I, I found the flow to magus to not be super fun to, to what I like to play. It's very straightforward, very efficient, but you're doing like one or two things. A turn. It's the same thing okay. every time. Not much variance. So I didn't like that as much. I swapped over to a rogue with my bracket racket to... Man, it's the one that can use strength weapons. So those of you that play a lot of Pathfinder 2nd Edition, that's it. So I'm using a long spear, kind of bridge that polearm okay. gap because I love using polearms. And I had a lot more stuff that I could do. Tumble through and I picked up the, the Magus multi-class, essentially what it is for Pathfinder. So do I can you get like 10 feet of range with polearms in Pathfinder? Yes, nice. you do uh, for certain weapons. There are some polearms that don't like tridents and whatnot. But uh, from there, we had a couple of sessions. It's been super fun. And I've got this teleport ability where I can teleport within five feet of something and give it a good old jab for two actions together rather than three, which is a spell and a stab, what usually would, would cost. Okay. And it's... Apparently like the Kingdom Hearts style extra boss in this first book. And post the fight, we had learned it has been fancifully nerfed by our, our GM. So it's, it was supposed to be stronger. It was supposed to be oh, stronger. No. And during the fight, there was this really great... What are they doing? They are pooping. They might be playing with my uh, other no, poop in there. They're in the bathroom. Sorry about that. Last time they were attacking my shoes, I remember. So there's this big, like, necromancer lady or blood Course. lady, uh, Belcor, the, the big lady of the thing. Not in this book. She's later on. She's a big boss. But she has these henchmen that she's interacted with, the people that she's killed. Sure. And T turned it into, like, a memory backstory thing. And if we went to each of their graves where they were during the fight, 
went into kind of this. The yeah, it's cool. it's kind of like what Netherdeep is. I was kind of thinking that too. These memories, it's exactly like that actually. We get items if we successfully do it and it lowers its AC. Huh. Its AC is super fucking high. I was jabbing at it because I do a shitload <laughs> of damage and I teleport and I give it a big old stab and I do a ton of damage. It crits me. That's which when you get Pathfinder. crit in Pathfinder, yeah. it gives you dying two right away. And then I fight it a couple more times and it crits me again the next time it hits oh, me. Oh no. So I'm dead, but it was a crit. This is on roll 20, so you can see, you see yeah. it happening. It was in front a of your 40. Eyes. A nat 20 to 40. How much is your AC? My AC at that time is 21. Damn. So it, it like super mega fucking crit me. And I didn't notice, I didn't realize, and the player says, oh, he just dies. And I went, oh no. <laughs> No, no death saves, nothing. It's just done. Um, and I assume you probably had banked up your hero points, or they were called. I'd like, use them, yeah. right. I don't think you can do anything to um, enemy hits. Like it no, just it's just, I'd say when you die, you yeah. can use it to like get back up or something. Yeah. But so it turns out you just die. You just die. Yeah, when you get to dying four, I believe is what it is. So two crits will, will do that wow. to you. And uh, yeah, I, f I went down as the character would. I, ha I had a nice death, death scream or whatever the thing is called. How much fight was left? One hit. Oh no! And I, my character went. Remember me tomorrow, friends. Of course. And then within like ten minutes of it, uh, our friend had made a whole, um, just kind of Lion King esque art style, like Disney ish picture of my, my great Noel character dying with a Damn. giant stab. And it was a fucking creature of the void. The, the void only thing that killed me was the the void stuff. So it was really thematic. It was super fun. Yeah, um, Abomination Wolves is like a pretty dungeon crawly. Right? It's very dungeon crawly. Okay. You're you're running in and you're jumping out if you ever want a time to break. I don't know much about the Abomination Wolves, but I, like, I don't know how equivalent it is like a, a um, oh, what's the like something of horrors, tomb of horrors. From... It's not that hard. Okay, because that was that that one specifically designed to just kill everyone. The monsters much. are like consistently two levels above you, but we had wrecked through this one. This guy, in a normal context, just critted. Even outside of that, with if there were no nerfs to it, we would have been dead instantly. I don't know how these players, with what they're equipped with, are supposed to be able to beat that. It's optional. Yeah, okay, man, that's why. It's you, not the you final boss. You get your ass kicked and you run away and come back maybe at 10th level or yeah, something? I don't yeah. know. But, but the thing, no, you can't get back because you're locked in the room. Oh. Yeah, that with is, how you get in there. That's weird. So I don't know. Uh, I kind of want to watch like a traditional, like someone actually running the game for someone, no changes, and see what happens in that room. If you got some like real, I guarantee you there's some forums talking about how you can be, be able to beat this, but it's AC is so high. I wonder how often that happens. Because even Chris Perkins, the guy that wrote Curse of Strahd and made that, whenever he ran it for Acquisition Incorporated, he changed a lot of stuff. So even the guys that make these things change stuff. So yeah. I wonder if anyone actually just runs it as, as written. So that's why I'm curious to see it in 5th edition, because then I'll, I'll have my interested. brain to yeah. be able to tell exactly what ways you'd be able Which to I beat did this. check uh we don't know when it's coming out it's more just it's not really a rumor but it was just confirmed by the game designer okay. uh that it was on the way that's cool uh, uh, so yeah and i think it's really interesting because that's how we got pathfinder in the first place they were jumping off offshoots from, yeah. from 3.5 e edition exactly um so i, li I like this i think it's going to give paizo a lot of more eyes on their stuff too i think it would be fun for me to get more experience um running that in fifth edition as a gm because it's something i've been through yeah. so yeah that's another really good thing here and then we were talking about what episode we're gonna do uh me and him we being he's ryan oh he's braxton it's the dungeon crawl today we're gonna be talking What's about up? like kind of end game end campaign mm -hmm. big bad evil guy fights um we're getting to the end of our avengers yeah really long campaign we've gone on mm -hmm. it's the world that, we, that we've been playing in for about six years uh through two parties three years each mm -hmm. and I said, you know what? I just finished a game in Pathfinder, lost a character for the first time ever. So that seal's That's broken. Sad. It is very sad. I was not expecting it to happen. Could have easily backed off and we would have been fine, but it felt right yeah, for my character yeah, to go in. Finish it off. So I said, let's talk about how our game has been ending. We just had one of our, not not the penultimate fight, but a big, but one, a yeah. big one. It's been building up for and a little it was, bit. It was tough. And we it were talking tough. back and forth about how some parts of it felt a bit too tough. Some people yeah. weren't as into it. So I said, you know what? Let's talk about how it's the going for you. How you're prepping for it. End game. Uh, I think it's, I think the end game specifically is very intimidating. Yeah. Um, for DMs alike, but I think also for players. Yeah. I'm Cause it's, it's, I think it's, it's very scary to end a X year campaign, even if it's just one year. I mean, it's, you're pretty attached to that point. Cause I was, I was kind of looking stuff up. If you uh, play, let's say 50 weeks, 
four hour average session time commitment. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of time you're putting into that. And so to end that well, I mean, just take, for example, um, cause you want to make everyone happy. Yeah. Right. But for example, take someone like a, you know, good old George R. R. Martin or a Patrick Rothfuss that have these big books that have not come out yet. Yeah. Uh, I think it's very similar that, uh, the, the players except, uh, in that instance are the fans. There's a lot more of them in that case, but there's this expectation that you want it to end well, the players want it to end well, the DM wants it to end well, and you got to find a way to somehow tie up all these loose threads, make everyone happy, and it's it's tough. So I, I organize my thoughts in a, a series of couple questions. Um, so we can kind of start there. Okay. You can, you, if you got some thoughts as well, I'm interested to hear what you have to, what you got to say. But so the first thought I have is okay. So when you're starting playing, uh, my brain's a little weird on this too, but should you have it planned from the beginning? The whole campaign, it planned out what you know the ending is going to be. A lot of the time, I think some of my favorite authors and writers, like for One Piece and um, I don't know about for Berserk, yeah. but they have the ending and they work backwards from there. Yeah, I think I, I'm with you. I think you got to have a little bit of yes and a little bit of no in there. Because obviously we're playing an improv storytelling experience. Um, we're not just writing a story. Yeah. Um, but I think, uh, having the overall concept of what could happen if the players don't get involved, I think that's the way to do it. Cause you, that way you have something, a jumping off point. If you get stuck in the preparation process, you don't know where you're going to go next. And it's a good way to get some foreshadowing. We are recording, right? Oh no, it's not recording. <laughs> That'll do it. Good eye though. Good eye. I thought we hit it. I thought we did too. All right. Hey, sorry about that. We just realized we weren't recording. It's like, what, probably no cut here. Ten minutes or yeah. something. Good stuff. Hello. Um, okay. There's some good cat action in there, though. Yeah, there was some good cat action earlier. All right. Welcome. Uh, yeah, it was good, good to see you. Uh, now you can see my drip. Yeah, shit. He's got <laughs> a really, sick berserk really good berserk jacket. Uh, anyway, um, so I think uh, being able to at least have the overall idea, and it can be a couple of overall ideas. For example, with our home game, I had like three or four big stuff that i'd planned at the beginning i was like all right so this is where it could go here 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 and it's just going to happen the players get involved and then i changed and adapted depending on what the players were interested in yeah there's some stuff that i put into the story the players like ah oh, it's kind of cool whatever but this i really find more interesting or more important and so then i kind of pushed that one off to the side um and that to me is the beauty of D &D. So this is the cat action you guys were missing right here some good cleaning foot uh, and booty hole action. Yeah, uh, that's to me the the beauty of the improv storytelling experience of, of tabletop RPGs. Being able to, so if I just wanted to just have a story, a strict railroaded story, I, I don't think tabletop RPGs is the way to do it. You can definitely do it. I mean, a you lot could. of these campaigns that it's come out from RC are are those. But I would I would say most of those have lackluster endings because there's not much player agency involved. That it just it ends. I mean, Nether Deep arguably is the best one, like we said last episode, yeah, really because there's so many different options. It can twist and what are you playing with down there? It can twist and turn and and the play obviously is still only like three ish endings, so it's not a whole lot. Not a ton. But it's still more than like a Curse of Straw. Actually, yeah. Curse of Straw, I guess, is a couple. But you know what I'm saying? That these pre-written adventures have lackluster endings because of the lack of player agency. So the beauty of the improv homebrew experience is the players get involved. Shit goes awry. The story never goes to plan. Uh, the plans never go to plan. Um, no, they do not. No. We want to have the interactive story. What are you? Oh, it's just annoying. Oh, my God. You're, you, you're just tweeting on on. The freaking at Dungeon Girl Pod or our Twitter, and it was check it out. Oh, every time the players skip the dialogue options and ask me, they're like, "Oh, where are we going?" We don't skip the dialogue options; we just don't remember. True, it's, they don't remember, but it's also times so where I, you know, someone's on their phone or someone's, you know, someone's doing something, and then like, "Oh shit, well, true, what are we doing?" Because some other player got involved in the in the conversation, and then yeah, it just veers it off. It definitely happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also do think, again, for me, uh, while I push some stuff off to this side for the big story um that i felt like you guys didn't care about as much but kept you know other things and buffed it up um at a certain point when you're playing the game you start realizing okay this is i know this direction that we're heading i know what's going to happen like for for now I, I would say with our home game i can see the ending even though we're still a little bit away from it, i can see where we're heading i know i know the direction we're going so this gives me a little more leeway to prep more things yeah. in advance because I, I i know we're going here i know this is the plan obviously there's still things that can happen on the way and i can tweak and change stuff but for the most part i know the direction we're going oh shit we're playing tomorrow 
we are playing tomorrow. We just got through a big point, like from a player's perspective right now, when you're getting the end, if you're the type of person that mulls over shit and you've got the situation where players are planning Mm -hmm. and like, what do we do for this? This is not what our contingency plans. We're at the point where these are the things that have been looming in our mind, like the whole campaign. There's no more thinking about it. There's a bit of anxiety. We're like, holy shit, we're dealing with this now. We're doing it now. So the session we're about to do, we just did a pseudo mini boss or like pseudo BBEG. This is a big chunk of our final goal. So Mm -hmm. it feels both liberating and scary to be in no man's land again. Yeah. Especially in the end, because I have no idea where the fuck things are happening. (laughs) You're throwing stuff at us, really big bosses. People could die at any point. Uh, My GM costs his perspective on end game he's got three tiers of play based off Mm -hmm. of levels you you start off i think it's like one through probably six or seven because there's a big bump at six uh where he's actively helping players six to ten i believe six to i think it's actually 12 he's still helping them a bit but not trying to kill them yet and then 12 up he's actively trying to kill them and that's the bracket we're in for ryan's home game right now so you know, Scared. you're you're throwing whatever you can. I feel like I'm, I'm always trying to kill and maim. No, we do get down quite a I lot. I try to kill, but you know, what do you want to make? You want to make it intense. You want yeah. to have these, these tough moments. So there's pressure from there the player's is. perspective. I, I definitely there's feel there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but as as this happens, you find what the players want to pursue, and you can buff up those things that you want to pursue. Mm-hmm. Um. Now I think the next important question to tackle as a DM that's ready to start wrapping stuff up is. Oh my God, we've been playing for three, four years. There's a lot of different quests that have happened, a lot of different plot threads that were here, but the players want to do this, so we jumped over there instead. But this plot thread still exists, or maybe you know, if you maybe if you're uh, a DM that likes doing stuff on the side, maybe it's been happening at the same time. So there's different plot threads happening all together. Do you have to tie up all this shit to end the game? You had a pretty good solution for it. I feel you had an NPC that was. You'll you'll understand okay. this. Uh, you had an NPC that is pretty powerful in the world mm-hmm. that we've met, Moon Man. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And uh, there are these quest lines and things that I wanted to yes. resolve. And his solution both made the world feel more lived in and that we weren't the only ones making things move. He mm-hmm. said, when I told him about these issues, because I saw him as a strong person, there's this hell portal that's opened up. There's this thing that's happening. He's like, you know what? I'll take care like, of it. Oh, shit, yeah. That sounds like some, you guys deal with this? I'll take care of that. So I think that's a pretty good solution if you don't want to have your players be the agent that tie up the loose ends in your yeah. story and you know your players don't feel slighted by not being the ones to go do these things because they want to live the power fantasy you know session zero stuff sure. you would have figured out i think it's a good solution yeah if, especially if you can tell if it's dragging on or the players like dude there's so much stuff we got to do how are we gonna get it all done like okay let's introduce someone that can maybe help with that and you guys already knew this npc is what's doing other things yeah you guys try to contact him one time he's like dude i'm i'm busy with this thing right now we'll chat in a, in a few days maybe yeah. And then you check them, you guys, you're like, okay, cool. I think it's okay to have loose ends as long as yes. they're either things you can do in a different campaign or after this, unless there's like plot hole. I think if it's like big major plot sure. holes, those are the ones sure. you want to tie up. But Yeah, I think really prioritize think the stuff that your players are interested in. Yeah. If you were going to leave stuff out, I mean, we're not expert writers. Even expert writers leave stuff out. Um, it can be fun for, like you said, another campaign in the future, yeah. the second campaign, or maybe it's just something you can dangle over your players after the campaign. Like, hey, don't leave. Yeah, you missed out on this cool thing. Like, I, I like dangling over my players before we fought a beholder. I was like, you guys missed the beholder that I was so excited to finally use, and you guys missed it. So, you tell me yet? We're no, there's no way we're going to it. <laughs> uh, you don't have to. I'll tell you later. Okay. I'll tell you later. Um, that being said, though, I think you should check in with your players every so often doing what Braxton just mentioned because sometimes you don't know the players really want to do something. Yeah. And so checking and saying, hey, what do you guys want to do now? Or maybe you finished the main campaign. The main story is... The I think it'll fall. Yeah, I think the cat just stopped the second we looked at him. Um, but let's say the campaign's over. You finished the main big bad guy. Strahd is dead. You're Everyone's happy now. Double checking with your players before you're like, all right, curtain's closing, game over. Check to make sure there's not any last minute items they want. Maybe that's, there's an NPC that wants uh, that's going into the plane of water. They mentioned that at some point. They're like, you know what? That NPC we checked in with, let's go help him real fast, and then we'll then we'll call it quits. Yeah. Okay, sure. Or maybe the players are ready for a whole new adventure, and it's time for a new story. You can put the campaign aside. Um, so I think just just checking in with them. Yeah. 
which you should always do as a DM, just check in with your players every so often and say, hey, I noticed this. Hey, I noticed that. How's things going? What do you think of the game so far? That type of stuff. Yeah, I think that's what it's all about. Just making sure you've you've got that tab on your players and their mindset and what they're wanting to do. And one of my favorite things to think about is like, campaign's over. You don't have to trash these players. Think about the Adventure Zone. They do these live play uh, mm. shows where they bring old characters from different campaigns and do one shots with them. So they're still yeah. around, especially if they're wanting to play in these worlds. Yeah, so if you have if they, you know, one shots is a good example for um, to, to uh, for these tidiest random things you haven't finished. The the Plane of Water thing I mentioned, some NBC wants to do that. You guys don't want to do it right now? Okay, we'll do a one shot in a few weeks or maybe this player or this player's character is ready to retire and so they can have a new character for this can for this short one shot yeah it's a lot of different options you could do if you're ready like this is a great ending for some of these characters but these other guys there's still a couple things they want to take care of yeah all right um so yeah this this one's a tough one for me um i think it's a tough one probably for a lot of people how do you make a satisfying ending the first thing i wrote here was it beats me i'll get back to you in a few months Let's see if I can figure it out. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> but uh, endings, not even just in tabletop, are very hard to pull off. I mean, think of some of your favorite, maybe not favorite, think of some books, movies, shows, and animes that didn't end well. And you're like, okay, well, I wasted you know, 500 pages or 40 hours or 600 hours of a D&D campaign. Yeah. And it's just over? Okay. Uh, if you're watching Ranking of Kings, close your ears for like 10 seconds or five. I'm going to count it down. Okay. Right, you ready? My hand's up, so close your ears. Uh, the ending was just not satisfying for me. They did a weird stuff with a big, 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 bad, evil guy. Like, don't. That's a long five seconds. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> they did a weird thing with like the big, bad, evil guy. And it was weird. The resolution was weird. The key components. Good to come back. Come back. I don't okay. know if you're watching people the audio version. You, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Come back. Um, I think it's important to understand what the, yeah. the villain wants so that the players can understand the results of the ending and how it impacts them yes. in the world. Yes. Otherwise, it's like, why, why did we do this? Or what, you know, what was the what impact? Was the Other than a satisfying, we beat a, a hard encounter. Because that in and of itself can be enough if True. it's not a story heavy. That's what your players let. Players just want some intense combat yeah. and strategic stuff, 100%. Otherwise, like for me as a player, I want to have a motivation, obviously, for, for doing this and mm -hmm. pushing myself and risking my life and others. And secondly, I want to understand what happens and why it's happening. Uh, like you can have Kingdom Hearts or some Final Fantasy games, specifically Kingdom Hearts, um, and the Strangers of Paradise ending, which I will not talk about because we can't. Because we'll we can't. <laughs> Donkey, that might not have been in the ending of it, but he made a video on it, and he might be getting shit on. Um, it is the most out of left field shit. Persona did it as well, though. They yeah. Said that you can't, or Atlas, I guess I should say, said yeah. you can't stream this, and they got so much hate that they eventually took it back. Yeah, it's just I don't want to. It, it can't be something that comes out of left field, either. Yes, as a, again, knowing where it's heading at the very least can give you some foreshadowing. So it's not just okay, that's the ending, kind of like the. Um, it was all just a dream type trope kind of thing. That's just, that's so frustrating to yeah. that have just wasted the entire time reading this book. Years of doing a campaign. Oh my God. Does it need to be like super complicated or is oh, there no. a way to do it simply? I mean, look at all the, the mainline D&D stories. Big, bad, scary guy, Strahd, ends with us killing him or we die pretty much. Yeah. It's got, it, it doesn't have to be super complex. I mean, is that a, I don't know, I guess to, to each person their own, it can be enough or sometimes it's not enough, but True. again, keeping tabs in your players, like, are they, how well do they understand the situation? Yes. And you just notice the things that their minds are drawn to the specific aspects of the bad guys in, in our world. There's a possibility of a mass reset and everybody just kind of returns to a singularity a single point one mind. That's the big threat right now that we're trying to prevent. So something satisfying for us is the prevention of that or that being set off to paths that we have clearly defined, understood yeah. and defined. So Ryan can frame his ending to have those be the threat or the results. He can circumvent that, but keep it within the realm of understanding of what we have within the world. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of like three paths you can do without freaking your players out, I guess. Yeah, I, I think so. this this might be, hey, maybe it could be kind of fun to do a, a secondary episode on this topic with the uh, fantasy authors. I am writing fantasy podcasts. Because oh, yeah. uh, this, is, this is not just a, a tabletop topic. This is a... No. Like, how to write a satisfying has been debated for thousands of years. Like, it's very hard to do this well. Uh, but I think specifically about D&D &D or specifically about tabletop stuff is 
um, don't stretch it to keep playing. Because as much as you love playing d d there's always a second campaign. You can always play it uh, somewhere else. It doesn't have to be in just in this world with these mm. characters. So I think if there's a good and satisfying ending to that campaign, even if it came earlier than you expected and anticipated, there's no harm in taking that. Critical Role Campaign 2 did this, where they, they ended much earlier than people were expecting. And... Is this the right it was time? Fine. Yeah, it was the right time. They, I think they even said something like, it ended earlier, but this is this is not the end of the Mighty Nine of uh, our, these characters, but it's the end of this story. And I think that was, I haven't seen it, but I, people were pretty all right with it. So I think if it ends well, and it, I think they ended like level 14 or something like that, 15, I don't know. I could be yeah. way off base. But that's an example of it's okay to end things early instead of just dragging it out for the sake of dragging it out. Yeah, think about some of your favorite shonen manga. And I'm not sliding any of them, but there are probably many portions of Bleach, maybe not One Piece, Naruto, big time Naruto. It's crazy it, to think that maybe not ended. One Piece when it's like the, was it like the longest running now? Not like anime franchise, no, but I think like shonen manga, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Because there's some kids shows like Doraemon and other stuff that are still being produced to this day. He's got that thing planned out like crazy. Yeah, no, he's he's got the he just did a massive reveal. No spoilers for it, but um, the thing that has has been established since day one just got like twisted on its head <laughs> it's with evidence. Insane. And it's like, whoa, that's kind of sick. Uh, so there's a lot of times where publishers will drag mm-hmm. it on for the sake of, of money. TV, anime, or not anime, um, American TV shows do this so often. Yeah, your audiences or your players want it to keep going. They don't want it to end, you know? Maybe this is like a side topic, but what if your players keep avoiding the big, big bad evil guy? I know your answer, they win. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, pretty much. If they, they avoid it for so long, it, it'll happen. Yeah, so there you Or go. at the very least, you could... You send them, you send them enough warning signs, like keep ignoring them. You got to say, guys, just let you know. This, this time this bomb's is, going. It, this, something's happening. Yeah. But I think, to be fair, if they are ignoring it, maybe they're ignoring it because they're not interested, then maybe you can tone it back and you can find something else they are interested in. That's But if you've gone, you know, 10 years or five years, even made it short, like a couple years with this, they know this is the big bad guy. And then for some reason, it gets close to the ending. They're like, uh, let's go do this instead. Like, oh. At that point, it's kind of a little too late to, to pick and choose. If you're watching on YouTube, go back for like five seconds. I just had a, he said 10 years. And I was like, wait a minute, we've done this campaign for like six years. And I did some math. I'm 25 now. thought I was 26 for a second. And then I subtract that and I went 19. That's how old I was. And I went, wait a minute. How is six years going back six years? I'm still in basically the same fair, chunk of life I am now. It was a now. different campaign. It but was, but you know, I'm basically. 10 years in the past, but it was the same world. It's not too different, not too dissimilar. It's just crazy to think. I'm, I've been an adult for a significant period of time rather than going into another section of my life where I was younger or like in high school. Sorry, sidebar here. Yeah, D&D takes over the world or tabletop takes it over your does, life, It does, man. man. That's why with some of the stuff I'm talking about and some of the things I'm interested in, my pitch is like, we need to get some more TTRPG shit in this. Mm-hmm. There's not like critical roles getting so I, big. I do think everyone, it's it's something that everyone can, get, can enjoy. It's collaborative storytelling with mechanics people Mm -hmm. love board games of all ages and that's all this is improv is a blast and a half yeah what else do you think about endings though uh so this is uh, another tough one Mm. how do you end on a dot what happens when you know you have to end a campaign early maybe you're moving or maybe things are (laughs) maybe things are falling apart or the dm's just tired of it doesn't want to play anymore I think th- this is how I broke it down. You can definitely please shout at me if you have other options. I broke it down to three options I think you might have as a DM if you're in this position. One, you could pause or postpone the campaign in case things clear up and you're able to return in the future. I think this is a very case-by-case basis. Yeah. Um, it could work, but it could also leave things a little open-ended for too long. You're able to return there and was like, okay, well, I guess it's just over. So that's an option. Two, you could find a way to end in an open-ended way after wrapping up a quest, giving players the opportunity to continue in the future. So kind of like one, but you're at least finding a point where it's like, all right, this yeah. is, we finished something big. If God helps us, we're able to get back here. We can pick up where we left off. But if not, the characters can go off and live their lives now. Uh, I like this one, I think, the most because it leaves the door open. Um, and if you're unable to continue, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like you rushed it. Yeah. Which brings me to the third one. You'd end the campaign entirely by finding a way to shoehorn things in as quickly as possible. So obviously, if you're ending on a dime, you're not prepared for the ending. You realize, okay, Joe's leaving in two weeks. We're not going to be able to play. Any, or maybe I'm, le- I'm moving in two weeks. I got a job somewhere else. I'm not going to play online. I'm not going to make this work. 
I got two weeks, two sessions to figure out how to end this entire campaign. We were playing for four years. Yeah. What the hell am I supposed to do? I mean, you you did it for Curse of Strahd. Uh, yeah, we weren't that close. You had us fight him for the final time. Oh, okay. That's true. That's true. But when, I, when we went into that, I knew we were already on a small time limit. So, and to be fair, I also cut out things I didn't like already. And then when I knew we had shorter time, I cut okay. more things. So it wasn't just a last minute. Like it's no. not as abrupt as you're talking but about. But the now. campaign itself, after you left, we played for another couple months. Uh, and then it was very abrupt. Oh shit. Thanks uh, for reminding me about that. Yeah, Cause now I remember a plot, whole plot point in, in our campaign about king of a different country that I don't yeah. want to leave on. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it started falling apart. Uh, some, we added someone else into the campaign and he suddenly couldn't make it last minute. And then, there's only a couple people still left and they were having difficulties and then it, it just fell apart and I didn't even end it. It just fell apart. And then obviously with this new campaign, the two players that were in the last one, you and one of our other players found out what happened at the end. It was not, not good things happened in that place. No. <laughs> uh, which maybe was me being petty that we ended like that. But, uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, it would have happened. That, you're that, just giving us seeds that's of a, interest. That's a really good example of that's what I knew was going to happen if the players had no engagement. And because the players had no engagement, that's what happened. Um, okay, but uh, I think doing this final third option is my least favorite because you could run into the same issues that canceled TV shows do, where people are just like, this sucks. You're not, yeah. it's not, just not possible to take everything that's happened over these last couple of years and fit it into one small little box. Yeah, it's tough. Oh, it's very I, tough. I think for me, like... Obviously, I want to make sure it's a positive experience, but I, I, I don't want to do like the third option is not my favorite either. I'd go with the no. other two, kind of end it some way. But sometimes people literally just like, okay, bye. I got to move now. Sorry. Yeah. So sometimes you have to do the third option, and it's just done. Yes. And Maybe you can, send them a write up and say, hey, here's what happens. You can send a write up to some of the other players and say, all right, there you guys go off into the wild blue yonder together. Um, which actually makes me think of my uh, girlfriend. I was talking to her about this topic. She mentioned an interesting uh, idea. What's happened, you know, f for example, let's say we end this campaign and your character has some side quest that he wanted to do but was never able to get it accomplished in the main story. And then for whatever reason, the players that are at the table are like, I don't really want to do that. So then it's just, it's still really important to you. What would you suggest to that player, to that DM that's in that position? Would you run it for them on the side? Would you have them get some of their friends together or just like type it to them? What would happen? Maybe because it was pretty, I, I don't think the group wouldn't want to do the thing that are in my circle. Yeah, I'm just saying for example. Yeah, you could, if you're online at least, say, hey, DM, I really want to do this. Maybe help me find like a two or three of our friends run yeah, a just one be or like two a, shot. Yeah, it's be a very short one or two shot. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously you're way more invested in the other two characters are, but. Right. It's a way to do it. And Otherwise, I, like, yeah. yeah, I told her, I, I'd say, first of all, if the other players and I'm the DM and the other players don't want to do it, I'm probably not going to play with them ever again because it's kind of an asshole move. If something's still really important. And we could do what you suggested earlier where it's a one shot, but the characters are different, but the player is the same. So the player, yeah, like, I don't want to play my, my character's done, but thank you character that does work for you. I'll pick up a, you can just buy a, a mercenary somewhere and he'll come help you out yeah. or something, yeah. <laughs> something along those lines. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I like that. I think Give them a be, chance to try a build that they haven't done yet. Yeah, I think it'd be a little uh, tough if you know if you if that happens. Um, but I think the for the most part, I think most groups would probably be able to work it out and be like, yeah, yeah, hell yeah let's do it. There's a lot of talk on the internet about like backstories and loose ends. Oh Not God, everything has to be tied up. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Like, you don't need to have like a 20 page backstory. And I'm I'm definitely in the middle. I you can. For sure, right? A massive yeah. backstory that um, is like seven pages long and has quests for your your team to pick up. And good on you for for doing that. But make sure you're like some of the people in those comment threads that say, "I do not expect you DM to a read all this and b make all these things come to fruition." Yes. So if you're on that like it's into the spectrum where you do have a massive one, understand it and like set your expectations. Then versus character that is just its stats and you throw it Blank in. Slate. No problem either. Your DM will probably come up with stuff or maybe that fits in the setting. You guys are just doing dungeon crawls. You know, there's no yeah. wrong way to go as long as you're not expecting somebody to put as much care into it as you did. Yeah, there's no, I think the only wrong way is, uh, to play D&D &D is to be an asshole. Yeah. Everything else, as long as everyone's on the Doesn't same matter. page, boom. 
Yeah. Everyone's going to be happy. That's what Session Zero is all about, kids. So, I mean, like you said, trying to tie up all these ends at the end of the game is not always possible, but yeah. there are some suggestions for you. You do it before the big final boss, try to squeeze everything, that could also be weird. Yeah. Uh, so, the last thing I have here, and this is not a question, this is something I think every, every game should do. This is, I think it's a requirement. Okay. That's not to say you have to do this, but I think it's a requirement. So, you should think about doing it. So, you have to do it. Uh, the epilogue. The, after the game is over, the story is completed. You do, you, you finish the session. Everyone's happy. You killed the final big boss. You've uh, resurrected someone to die, whatever. You, you, you finalize. And everyone's like, all right, that's it. Before everyone goes off in their separate ways, do one final session. So you say, hey, guys, and we're all done. Let's do one more time next week. Same characters. But the players have to prepare something ahead of time where they come prepared and they think and mull over what their character is going to do next. What's the epilogue? What does their life look like now that they've killed the big bad, killed the this scary lich that's trying to kill and take over the world? Hmm. So they go back to their family farm. Are they, they, they sharing this with the DM? They're sharing it with everyone. So they do the, okay. the epilogue and they, they can go grouped uh, person to person. Or, for example, if two players are making their characters together, maybe they, they romance each other during the games. Now they're off doing their own thing. You can type it up together, whatever. Um, I think this is a good way to... To really put the curtain down, everyone's happy. I think that the problem where this could come up, though, is <laughs> ideally the player shouldn't like create uh, new whatever issues. They, yeah. yeah, create enough waves in their epilogue that it's starting <laughs> what could be either a, a new campaign or something that's bigger than what they just fought. Like, oh, my well, character's so upset about the results of all this, I go off and kill an entire city. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you probably could, could. You probably could do pretty it. Pretty fun. Yeah. But to an extent, yeah. I mean, for example, uh, happy, happily ever minor after. spoilers for the end of campaign one for Critical Role. This is that happened in their epilogue that someone just so happened to be using an item that they had found, and uh, it kind of took things for a loop. Uh, but this did became like a couple one shots they did later. Okay, so it didn't all end badly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but during the game, I was like, oh well, now what do we do? Um, I think the DMs also could have fun with this and do some of the favorite NPCs at the party. Yeah. They could do it. All right, so this is what happened to Jack that you guys met a long time Jack. ago. Now he's got his own house and he's got a, a family and friends. Yeah, I got like two or three NPCs. I want to make sure that they're they're chilling. Yeah. I think, and you could then work with the players as well. They may have they got a really good relationship with them. They could link up, hang out. And, I don't know. They get they grow old and their kids, kids, then meet up and hang out with each other. And you're just sitting back on the lawn watching. A lot of fun stuff here yeah. with the epilogue. So we haven't actually like ended it in a campaign. I think once that happens, we've talked about this several times. Uh, the reason why we haven't, haven't done an episode on like actually doing it is because yeah. we haven't done it yet. Yeah. yeah. So this is more thinking about how you could do it. Yeah. Can, and then we'll do an episode on what it was like yeah. from the player's perspective and from the DM's perspective. It's going to be rough, dude. It's going to be weird. We'll see. Um, I think the, the only issue I can see with doing an epilogue type thing is if someone's character dies in like the last couple <laughs> has so then they have to just kind of sit there i guess and listen i mean hopefully they're invested enough in everybody else maybe sure. each of them writes like i don't know eulogy or visiting or them or the uh. like the dm creates the act of actually what happens with their body if it's still sure. sitting there I think there's after the, enough yeah, the time. The player could it. write maybe from their NPC, an NPC's maybe they left a will. perspective. Yeah, a retroactively, will. even if they did or not, say hey, that could be kind of say nice. on your body you left a will or something. Yeah, because you you had a feeling. We came back as a spirit somehow and said some unfinished business. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be kind of cute. I like that. Um, or yeah, from an NPC, like you have a brother or a sister or a family member that's still alive, and maybe they integrate with the party somehow. That'd yeah. be nice. Uh, so that's in-game content. Hell yeah. No, That's I'm the end of Final Fantasy 14 in game oh, right there. Oh god. I can't play that anymore. It's too much time investment. I just need to watch the oh story. I'm, yeah, I can't. It's a I have, huge I have time 100 investment. No, I think I have like 210 hours in it and I've done like nothing. I own all the expansions and I have not made it to the last expansion, which is yeah. Shadowbringers. I'm in Stormblood. Yeah, I made it to, I made the Stormblood and I I own Shadowbringers and Inwalker and I Yeah. I bought them when they came out too, and I never got to. <laughs> yeah, no, this isn't a slide on Final Fantasy. I, I no, think it's there's not. a lot it's a to. It's a fantastic game. There's a lot to enjoy, but when I looked back at things I really enjoyed, it was damn that music track was good. Yeah, music's great. Uh, around where I stopped, I was like, dude, these dungeons are sick. These raids are pretty fun, and then it's just. God, it's like you so had to be time. there kind of moment for me. Like I would have wanted to be. Hundred percent. At the which is, I mean, I was could have done that for Endwalker, but I was like, 
I stopped. Yeah, so, so I'll get back to it. I really want to play the Reaper class. It looks cool. I know T, her, our friend, is, is playing it a good bit. Oh, but it looks so nice. Yeah, we want to talk about in-game stuff and see what we could come up with in terms of prepping for it because we're, we're getting there and it's going to be a pretty big event, I think. Yes. So that's yeah. better for us. I'm, I'm excited. I'm if, excited. If you're interested in following us and seeing the extra uh, social interaction that Ryan's been particularly pioneering on our Yeah, uh, we Twitter. hit uh, what, 100, 100, 100, something, yeah. 101 followers right now. Yeah. But I, know, I know I always hate saying numbers like that because I know we're always going to lose one. It's true. Uh, and most of y'all aren't already following, which means you should. True. Uh, but that's at Dungeon Crawl Pod on Twitter. We don't really use our Instagram too much, uh, but that's there as well. We sometimes post random pictures. Yeah. Uh, but we have a link tree in the description, which houses our Discord, which has hit like 50, 60 people in it. Yeah, it's gotten pretty nice. Yeah, people are constantly posting stuff like uh, maybe vacations that they're going on or talking about homebrew content that they're creating. There's a pretty spiffy one that was posted recently about... uh, Pathfinder stuff. Yeah. uh, yeah. Like Pathfinder-based actions. Yes, for 5th edition, I believe. Super cool. Super cool. So if you're in a situation where you want some people and eyes to look at it, jump in there through your stuff, get get to know us. 60, 70 people in there right now. Yeah, and if you're you're chilling in there long enough, you want to start a game or join one that's going on, like the 5th edition Zelda game that's going on, I think it's it's pretty full at this point. Yeah, we always always hop in the introductions area. We always appreciate seeing new people ahead in there and explaining who they are, how long they've been watching. It's crazy. I think some people have been watching for a long time. Yeah, super crazy. So we love you guys jumping in there. Um, You can always watch any of the games that are going on. I think all of the ones that are happening. Currently, yeah, um, I believe so. If it's open and you can click on the voice channel, that means you can watch it. Usually we either have cameras on or the, the tabletop. Yeah, we do have going. our home game on there for interested to watch yeah, that too. Yeah, we do. If you're interested in seeing how the ending of that goes, and you can judge Ryan for what True. he does when he kills us. You have no um, idea what's going on, yeah. but you'll be in the same boat as one of our players who started, who joined a little bit into it, and he, he has no idea what's going on. So. Idea what's going on. Uh, He's your self-insert. Also on the link tree, if you back up after you got into that Discord, you signed up there, we do have a Patreon. We've had a yeah. couple of supporters at the time, a couple of long-running people up here. You're probably scrolling across the screen at the moment. If you ever feel like supporting the podcast after you've kind of taken care of yourself or any other world issues you're caring about, Ukraine's still going on, please help yeah. anybody that's going on in that situation. But if you feel like you've got some extra income for us, helps us always improve what we're going on. Uh, email the Dungeon Crawl Pod email, yeah. at gmail.com. Yeah. Did you watch any of the Oscars? The punch, just the, the just slap, the, just the slap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick side, did you see here? I have no idea what this means because every article I clicked on was this big, and all it said was Will Smith has left the organization. Let me see exactly what it says because I don't, I, I couldn't even tell you what it what it says. Yeah. Uh, he left the. Okay, I can't find it right off the top of my head, but he left the academy thing. I don't even know what the what is he leaving? What does that mean? I, no one explained it to me in any article I read. But it sounded I don't know. big. Some correlation Maybe he of gave his just for this. award back. He, I think he probably had to, but I don't, I don't know if he did or not. Yeah, they're investigating it now, yeah. too. Chris Rock didn't want to. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I did watch a little bit of it. And I've, I've noticed as I've gotten older, though, I've seen less and less of the uh, like big picture, best picture movies. I used to make it a, a thing because I was a big film guy. I used to watch every best picture nominee and I'd make my own guess. Now I've, I saw one this year. Sadly, the one that did win though, Coda. I'm very excited. I want to watch it. It's about yeah. um, a child of deaf adults, um, so I'm excited to, to watch it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, while I was watching though, you know they do this little like um, before the show, they started doing some awards now, like best score, best editor, which is very sad. Those are before the show now, just yeah. like the game awards do those now. Um, they do like a little video, so they show stuff off. I was watching it, and they had a little. Uh, <laughs> that must be a fan of ours, and there's a little clip. It's a little clip of us in there. That said, uh, make sure you rate the Dungeon Crawl five stars on Apple Podcasts. Type into the little review thing down there. Hey, I saw you on the Oscars. I'm sure that'd get some people excited that they were on the Oscars. <laughs> Pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. They should do podcast awards. They probably do exist somewhere. Yeah, they do. They probably do exist somewhere. They do streamies oh, yeah, they are. Yeah. that are not stream-based, which yeah. is weird. I don't think so, are they? I think they are. Oh, that streamies was just like, no, they're like regular content creators. I got them. I know. Um, streamies. Uh, I don't know. It's I don't names. I yeah, watch. best online and video creators. Yeah, so they're in. It's not just exclusive to streaming, but a lot of them got words like Lily Pichu, I think, won something. Um, yes. Other people got stuff. Um, I don't remember his name. He's crazy, dude. He's really cool. Uh, but outside of that, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, they do it. Here's Ninja standing around. Yeah, so it's for everyone. Yeah, it's been pretty, pretty fun. The last few weeks have been going on. We got our session tomorrow, so maybe we'll have some tweets about that. Yeah. Because things go on. Um, that's us. He's been Ryan. 
he's been practicing. Uh, we don't know what we're doing next week. I know the Book of the Dead Pathfinder comes out s- next month, sometime, or this month, it's April yeah. now. Uh, and we're not going to do a full-on review of that because we're not Pathfinder experts. I don't feel like it would go well, but we might do a small little impressions video yeah. and see what we think about it because I'm very excited just to get some lore and insight on it. Yeah, hell yeah. So I love dead things. All right. Thanks for calling with us. We'll see you guys for an awesome episode whenever that happens next week. Well, whenever. Tuesday. You know what's happening. Yeah.